Hello, good evening. It's already 6.01 in the evening. Welcome to our live discussion, the Cebu Hobby Events Organizers Roundtable, powered by Xsync Events, presented to you by Keepsakes. Cebu, the Queen City of the South, has a thriving community of hobbyists, from anime, cosplay, art, and even board games. A friendly community where creativity, passion, and fun is enjoyed by fellow hobbyists. The city is a host for a variety of hobby events, which gathers hundreds, if not thousands, of guests coming not only from the province of Cebu, but also from places as far as Tumaguete, Iloilo, and even Manila. Events like the ones present today are not just for the locals, but also for the tourists. Unfortunately, events regarded as uh, meetings rather, no? uh, regarded as mass gatherings, rather, are suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And as part of the tourism industry, the events industry is badly hit with quarantine restrictions and health concerns. While we have to determine the financial impact of the pandemic in the country's meetings, incentives, conventions, and exhibitions, or the MIC industry, there is already a call for the said industry to be prioritized in the Tourism Recovery Plan of the Department of Tourism. Keepsakes has invited organizers and representatives of major hobby events in Cebu for this roundtable discussion. We will ask them what will be their plans moving forward. That said, let's first introduce the guests for this evening's live panel discussion. From the Cebu Cosperis Guild, or CCG, the organizer of Christmas Matsuri and co-organizer of Cebu's only Japanese Ponodori Festival with the Japanese community, we have cosplayer and the main man of Mandawis Kawai Cafe, Griffin Salomon. I am. All right. Okay. All right. We're good. We're good. Hi, Griffin. Good evening. Yes, yes. You're on. You're on. You're on. You're on. 
Hi, um, AJ from Keepsakes. Hi, everyone. Again, I'm Griffith, the Senior Events Chairman for the Cebu Cosplayers Guild and in charge of the cosplay, Yukata, and the volunteer for the Bon Adori. All right. Okay, we'll get back to you later on. Thank you very much and enjoy this, uh, enjoy this discussion later on. We also have from Unity Productions and Cebu Esports United, the ones who brought us the Mayor's Cup with the Cebu City Government. Ladies and gentlemen, the Q-Man, Max Fakili. Hi, everyone. My name is Max, and I am the um, operations manager for Unity Productions and uh, one of the organizers for Cebu Esports United. It's a pleasure to be here, Jay. I've got nothing thank to you, do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Now we move on to Otaku Fest. From Otaku Fest, which had its 13th edition just last February, inviting international guest cosplayers into their fate, we have Jomar Joshua or JJ. Good evening, Jomar Joshua. JJ, good evening. Hello, yes, Jay. Uh, good evening and good evening to everyone out here. Um, this is JJ, Chief Director for Otaku Fest 2020, a uh, long-time Otaku Fest organizer. So, hope to hope you guys listen in to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. From the Toys and Figures Convention Cebu, or Topicon, we have Joshua Varela. So, hi Joshua, good evening. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, glad to have you. Glad to have you. All right. And uh, last but not the least, from the anime, role-playing games, comics, and hobbies convention, or Art Con Cebu, which had its successful run last year and also invited international guests, we have Jolo Escaño. Good evening, Jolo. Hey, good evening. Uh, thanks for having me, Jay. Yeah, so yeah, yes, I'm yes. Uh, Jolo Escaño. Yeah, the head organizer of um, Art Con Cebu and glad to be here all right thank you very much for accepting our invitation to be part of this panel all right yeah thank okay you, thank you so much. all right we'll get back to you later again so uh on the industry side we have uh while we have requested a representative from the cebu business months subo entertainment expo or c cebu a cebu chamber uh, chamber of commerce and industry event focused on championing the creative industry in cebu no one is available to represent it at this moment, but we are directed to the statement of the Cebu Chamber. Uh, I'll just read a part of it to quote. With inputs from the CBM 2020 team, the executive committee, and some past presidents, it is prudent for CCCI to reboot, strategize, and reschedule the CBM 2020 against the COVID-19 pandemic newly proclaimed by the World Health Organization. Therefore, events, that entail of large gatherings in June are postponed until further notice. The CBM 2020 team is currently innovating to hold activities for June using the very digital tools, methods we promote, a way of accelerating the use of technology and engaging participants with a more relevant agenda on business agility, continuity, resilience, and inclusivity as emerging opportunities in the light of current challenges and needs. This will involve live streaming and teleconferencing among others, if our companies are not to such, uh, not into such, then let's bring it on. In other words, uh, if we spoke to further the statement of the Cebu Chamber and the Cebu Business Month team, they are announcing the postponement of uh, activities for the CBM 2020, and uh, they are preparing for an online transition of their activities. So uh, that would be it for the CBM and the. Uh, these are our guests for this evening's panel discussion. Also with us is our co-moderator for this panel discussion, journalist Red Mendoza. He'll be asking questions to our guests and moderate our panel discussion later on. Hi, Red. Good evening. Yes, good evening. And thanks for uh, for uh, having me here. Of course, uh, being we have been into events for, for more than 10 years already. We have been covering events here in Manila, not only here in Manila, but also in Southeast Asia and Singapore. And it's a, and we are experiencing a very different uh, time here, the COVID-19 pandemic and so many event cancellations. Uh, we want to know how our Cebu event organizer friends are coping up with the, with the unusual um, stage of this pandemic. And 
we will be here asking questions and, and of course you we will be also we will be also giving some we will be also asking some questions about their uh, ways on how to survive this pandemic so just tune in and we will be happy to look forward with your questions as well thank you very much red and yes red mendoza uh, to moderate our panel discussion later on. So now we will begin with our main program. So uh, about this first segment that we have, we will be asking each organization and its representatives their achievements and milestones so far. This is for those who are not yet familiar with Cebu's hobby events community and the industry. So of course, uh, going back, we will proceed with Griffith Salomon of the CCG. Griffith, take it away. Yes. So once again, I'm Griffith from CCG. So CCG is already on our fifth year. And it all started with um, just a couple of uh, non-season cosplayers. It was uh, founded by Flame Denise, uh, which is then um, succeeded by Hayato, which is our current uh, chairman right now. So CCG is already at a 693 members if i'm not mistaken we are the smallest cosplay group here in cebu because we have standards and of course we also have preliminary uh, preliminary um questions to ask before we accept um members uh ccg was originally not um a organizing group but because of the dream of our uh, founder emeritus to organize an event, thus organizing Cost Act One, Cost Play in Action One, which was in Robinsons. And then as the year passed by, we organized more Cost Acts uh, on behalf of the cosplayers. Uh, after Cost Act One, we were able to get clients all over Cebu. First, um, we had the SM Seaside, which was our first client, and then Bon Odori, and then Jason Thermal, and so on and so on. So uh, right now, CCG is always aiming for our vision that we aim to have cosplay as a hobby and at the same time as a pastime for our fellow Cebuanos. And our mission is to... Uh, make sure that Cebu recognizes cosplay as a community through social awareness and interaction. That's why uh, every year we always make sure that we get clients who would want to have cosplay event as one of their activities in their malls. At the same time, uh, make sure that these events will be a yearly event here in Cebu especially to our fellow Cebu cosplayers. Um, so far, the achievement that we have done for the past five years is CCG is one of those who revives um, events. When I say reviving, uh, number one is those events that has been forgotten or is no longer being continued. Uh, first is, of course, the Ainenhar, um which was originally organized by Dencho, Sir Dens. Uh, we revived that one. We also revived a uh, revived cost ball, uh, which we aim to do it every year, but due to some um, financial stabilities, we can only do it once every two years. So uh, we also uh, contacted um, Wimli Tan, Mr. Wilmi, if you are watching, and also Mr. Arvri Yap, Arbs, if you are also watching as well. And... We are also the only cosplay group that has a sister company to help us with our events. So uh, because we are now having more than 80% of our clients here in Cebu, we cannot uh, sustain or entertain all of them. That's why we created a sister group, um, a fellow or a sister organizing team. Uh, we call them the Higihesui clan. So this uh, group of cosplayers are helping us uh, organizing clients' demands and uh, requests to make sure that we're able to cope up with the yearly or monthly uh, cosplay activities. And last but not least, the highest achievement that we have done is we were able to be affiliated 
with some of our Manila cosplay events in, um, of course, in Manila. Uh, we used to be affiliated with uh, Cosmania, cosplay.ph, organized by cosplay.ph. They're having cos craze here every year. And of course, last year we are already affiliated uh, with uh, Ozin Fest, uh, one of the largest uh, Manila events being held. And they are also they are extending to Cebu, so that's why they have reached. I have reached out to them, and they were happy to become one of our partners here in Cebu. So I think that's all about CCG, and of course the achievement for Bon Odori. Uh, bon Odori is uh, started to uh, 2012 in Aboitisilan. If you were there. And it was first founded by, I'm sorry, it was founded by the Japanese Association of Cebu, which was headed by uh, the former president, Ms. Kinui Sakurai. And Bon Odori is one of the largest Japanese theme uh, festival here in Cebu, garnering 33,000 uh, congoers or festival goers. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only in Cebu, but I think we also have uh, con goers or festival goers in Manila, I'm in Luzon and in Mindanao. So Jap uh, Bon Odori is being held every year. It's a cultural exchange on behalf of the Filipino and Japanese friendship. And next year, hopefully, um, we can't yet disclose the date, but uh, the date and uh, the venue, but it will be handled by um, Kazusan, Matsuhito Kazusan. So he will be the new uh, chairman for the Bon Odori next year, hoping. Uh, I believe that's all for CCG and Bon Odori. Jay for Keep Six, thank you so much. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much, Griffith Salomon from the Cebu Cosplayers Guild. Uh, we'll check uh, if. Uh, Red's okay now, okay? Uh, so that he can ask you the questions that we have on the line for this final discussion, all right? Uh, all right, we'll check if Red's okay. So yeah, give, give me a few. Okay. Yeah, that's it, ready. Siguro, um, later on, uh, we'll have the questions. Papalik tayo sa yun, okay, later on, ano. So, yeah, uh, let's move on to our second guest. We have the, uh, from Unity Productions, Max Makiling. Good evening. Hi, 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 everyone. So, uh, again, my name is Max. Um, for our achievements, really, like, it's more like hosting different events for different organizations. We're basically a manpower service. So uh, we've come across Joyo Expo, which is actually coming up, supposed to be uh, happening on June. But again, because of the crisis, then we're going to have to move that sometime uh, later in the future. We've also worked with Archon, of course, with Archon, our, one of our favorite, favorite partners, because everything's just so much fun in Archon. We've got uh, the Mayor's Cup. Of course, we also hosted a Mayor's Cup along with um, uh, Cebu Esports United. We also have um, Otaku Fest. We've also worked with Otaku Fest in terms of the esports segments. So it's a lot of fun in Otaku Fest also. And of course, guys, you'll get to meet the head organizer of Otaku Fest uh, in a couple of minutes. We've also hosted um, one of the biggest Dota 2 tournaments here in um, the Visayas. We've got uh, Astax 9 Philippine Dota 2 tournament, which happened like two years ago. And um, it was uh, held in, uh, where, where was that again? Yeah, that was an SM yeah, trade hall. So basically, um, Unity right now is um, we're just really taking care of our members. We do not want to force them to be um, uh, going out. So that's why we're sort of like living under a rock just to keep ourselves safe. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, Unity Productions. We've also worked with um, some other clients like Smart, Globe, some ISPs, anything that's esports related. Also with uh, cosplay related, we also have that in our arsenal as well. So it's pretty much it, Jay. <laughs> Don't want to take too much of your time. 
Ayun. All right. Uh, that's that's pasta. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sige. Uh, we'll get to Red Mendoza for the questions. Red? Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, Ascension, I was uh, not able to ask questions. Yeah. I know esports is one of I once esports is one of those not much affected because mostly you can do esports on your home. You can do yes. esports on your home. But right now, what are you doing right now in during the entire lockdown period right now? In in, in the case of your um in the case of your organization. So basically, we're just telling our members to, uh, we're more on focusing on supporting our own members, like mm -hmm. the people part of our organization. Like if there's anything that they need, then we're focusing our resources on them. Because um, honestly, we value each other so much as a group. We're just more than just an organization. We're really tight friends. And um, as of the moment, we are just uh, basically just floating. For now, mm -hmm. because sponsors, uh, especially um, especially our latest sponsors, like the ones that have partnered with us uh, since 2019, we're supposed to have another go for 2020. But right now, it's also floating for them, like uh, the marketing managers from different ISP companies, all that stuff. They're also mm -hmm. having problems in how to uh, market their product uh, amidst the crisis. Mm -hmm. So it's more on like focusing on ourselves as of the moment. But we do have some ideas in the future. Uh, like, for example, we've been playing around with um, ideas with uh, Jolo from Archon that oh, we might do something live. Oh, never know. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Just have to utilize the internet, the beautiful, beautiful internet. Just kind of have to utilize all of it in its glory. Uh, yes. Well, I, I could understand because, but of course, uh, right now, of course, you... you the internet is very much rich right now uh, for content and for ideas. So um, right now, uh, how does your event, of course, or how does your organization help right now with the communities that are somewhat affected with this uh, with the pandemic? Oh, so for that one, well, besides taking care of our own members, we're also actually like giving advices to uh other organizations there's this new organization that's um focusing on making events as well they're they're, they're virtually new uh they're called south.gg yeah mm. these guys yeah, are also yeah. awesome people. yeah yeah um these um uh, i know these guys and they're pretty close they're pretty close they're really cool people and they're continuing the esports uh tournaments even though it's all online so yeah. it's really good for them it's really good for them but as of the moment, again, just really allocating my resources to the people yeah. that are in need. Well. Yeah, I, I mean, that, I mean that's one of the most um, intriguing aspect of esports. I mean, people can do esports on their own home. Yeah, <laughs> you can. If you only have a computer and you just have a, a computer and a game, then you can basically go with it. So I think esports is one of those not much affected. Yeah, by the that's true. by the events by the by every pandemic. but of course you have to understand that internet uh, resources right now is not that pretty good especially um in far flung areas but i understand cebu has a good internet service but not all, not in the entire cebu has extremely good internet yes that is so true not all yes. not all places in cebu have uh it took me 3 years to get my fiber connection wow Wow. Yeah, I've been That's bugging all. PLDP for three years. <laughs> okay, that's thank you very much. Mind. Yeah, I mean, that's um, that's one aspect we should look into. Thank you very much, Max, Max, for your for sharing of your experiences. No problem. All right. Okay. So since Red's back, we'll go back to Griffith Ole. Griffith. Okay. So Griffith, here's Red uh, for the questions. Yeah. Hi, Red. Hi, hi. Of course, uh, I saw, I, I heard your profile, and you were the first to organize the uh, cosplay event in uh, Robinsons in Fuente. Am I right? Uh, Robinsons Galleria. Um, oh, Galleria, the new one in Cebu. The new one, yes. yes. And I thought it was in Robinsons, the old one. No, no, no. The last time we contacted them, they don't are they are not open with this kind of an activity. I don't know, maybe because. Uh, they are conservative or they're not yet mm -hmm. ready so mm -hmm. we then ventured with robinson's gallery yeah small 
Yeah, and then um, then we have some connections. The former uh, the former uh, founder has connections, so we we were able to have their first cosplay event there. Yeah. Um, I just like to ask you. Of course, um, bread and of course the bread and of course you do more events, and more events mm -hmm. are basically free. Yes. So right now, uh, do, were you planning on holding a were you planning on holding a mall event this year? Actually, uh, every December we make our calendar of activities together mm -hmm. with um, our mall representative, our clients, at the same time with our team. Actually, um, when we ended our calendar of activities, we were expecting around eighty percent of events to be handled by us. And on those 80%, we were also expecting that every month from March to October, we mm -hmm. have cosplay events on mm -hmm. different malls. So, yeah, it not was just very... Uh, not just I'm in sorry? Cebu City. Not just in yes, Cebu City, uh, but also uh, no, in, no. Or in Cebu no. City. Lang. Yeah, we are exclusive only here in Cebu. Okay. Cebu City or Metro Cebu? Cebu. Met Metro Cebu. Um, Metro Cebu. Okay. The Cebu province. There you go. Yes. Okay. Okay. So of course, um, of course, uh, you said that you, from March to October you plan to have eighty or you plan to hold mall conventions. Of mm. course, now that we are in um in a community quarantine, of course you are most affected because you were in ECQ. Yes. You were in ECQ. Mm -mm. How does that affect you as an organization as a whole? It really saddens us as mm -hmm. an organization because we are um, client-based uh, organizers, mm -hmm. meaning that there should um, it we you, we need to have a client for us to make an event. So mm -hmm. since these clients that we have are affected by the quarantine, so it also would mean that by following the IATF guidelines. There should be no mass um, mass gatherings or yeah. gatherings of more than ten or fifty. Yes. So in that sense, uh, we extended our apologies and, of course, our deep uh, uh, sympathies to our Cebu players. That this year, it's going to be very hard for us to organize a mall initiated event. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have members across you have members across the province and across the city as well. Of course, and yes. Of course, Mostly, they're somewhat affected. Somewhat affected, rin because yes. uh, um, not only it's just a form of pastime, not just mm. only a form of hobby, but in a way, it's a form of it's um. Parang meron mm. Yes. 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 So, one way. Uh, on. uh, how do you? Uh, how are you? As a leader, or as as a leader of the group, or some. Either of the group, how are you? Are, are you helping your co-members who are kind of expected? Na sana merong nangyari tong event na to, kasi meron na kung meron sana kung kahit konti man lang na pagpapak may pagkakita man lang or anything. How, mm. uh, how do you? Paano, how do you help them? Three right now, uh, we are in hiatus. So regarding helping them in a sense of making like um, financial status like that one. Uh, we always told them before that we will always make sure to refer to you some of our clients or some of our, uh, those who would like to help uh, our fellow cosplayers. But right now I think you know, we are kind of, the people are busy focusing on our lives here in a quarantine. So, mm -hmm. Internally, we are doing um, research and development right now. So we are looking for ways that we can, not in a sense of helping the cosplayers per se, but making sure to maybe improve or make it better for the next year's events to come. Okay. So again, yeah. thank you very much for uh, for answering all my questions, and I hope, uh, and I hope you have. And I hope you survive this uh, this global this global. I hate to say this catastrophe, but of course we all we all expect you to, to yeah, survive. Yeah. Okay, thank you yeah, very thank much. You. Jay, next, uh, let's go to the next uh, presenter.
All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Red and Max. So we will move on to the next uh, next speaker that we have. Our next guest. We will welcome from Ataco Fest, JJ. Good evening. Hello. Yes. Uh, once again, good evening, Jay. Good evening, everyone who is currently listening to this roundtable discussion. Uh, I am JJ again, Chief, Chief Director for Otaku Fest 2020 and a long-time organizer of Otaku Fest. So, Otaku Fest lang, no? Brief introduction. Well, Otaku Fest started um, as a bra- uh, as a kumbaga term namin, brainchild of Miss Ara Chowdhury. She's now a well-known Cebuano director. Um, it started in the University of the Philippines, Cebu. Uh, maliit lang kami noon, mga students, kami-kami lang. <laughs> Actually, yung uma-attend pa. So from there, um, 12 years after Otaku Fest 1, we reached 12 years and 13 seasons, we've reached Otaku Fest 2020, and we grew from talagang a very small and parang exclusive crowd of UP students, uh, no, UP Cebu students enjoying, you know, ha- um, anime, hobbies, games, role-playing, LARPing. Um, we grew from that small group to one of the largest um, hobby conventions in the Visayas and Mindanao. Actually, hindi nga lang largest, but I've heard one of the most anticipated and well-received, especially last year wherein we were able to really bring in the big guns or kumaga, big guests. And also in our previous years, we were also able to invite and bring in um, rising Korean pop stars. Um, so, yeah, but I guess what really makes, siguro parang, uh, how do you say this? What really made Otaku Fest, parang the biggest milestone of it, is actually last year. Why? Because aside from the international aspect, bringing in guests, World, World Cosplay Summit, and even our local segments, we were actually, that was the first time we were actually able to integrate and interact with the local community. We were able to bring in the likes of Cebu Animation Guild, Cebu Game Developers, Film Media Arts uh, International Academy. Tama ba yun? Uh, and really, yung, uh, the organizers from Recon, and we have uh, Unity Productions, Talagang grabe, I really saw and appreciate and really uh, medyo cheesy, but I loved how Otaku Fest 2020 was able to um, bring in all those people, bring in all these people, hold this ano, um, really great event, despite na it was the time wherein people were very unsure because of the rising COVID cases, pero it was really successful. And in large part, Chempre, thank you. I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank once again the not only the Cebuano hobby, hobbyists or congoers, because, well, we really do this for you, aside, Chempre, for us as well. We do it for our, you know, for the benefit of everyone. I'd also like to thank. Again, my team, siyempre, um, from Ray, Ara, Eva, Jace, uh, Alisa, Altea, Ella, Trisha, Janelois, um, Alec, uh, Virgil, um, Ilton. Yeah, the, these people, um, I, siyempre, I can't mention them all talaga. Uh, Jenny, yeah, and Max, but, but these people... Grabe, head, uh, salute. So, yeah, Otaku Fest. Also, ano nga pala, why I mention these people because Otaku Fest is and has always been organized by University of the Philippines Cebu students. So, rarely do we bring in people na 
kumbaga, not from the same school as us to help organize. But when we do, they really make ano naman, good contributions then. Um, reason being, parang tradition na rin siya. I guess it's, yun nga eh. Um, it's became, it's become one of the parang traditions and landmark of a taco fest na it's always um, the higher years, the graduating batch, handing out, um, passing the responsibility of organizing Otako Fest to the lower years. But, ano din, uh, also, yes, going back Otako Fest 2020, that was the first time nga pala we accepted, although, onti lang yon, but we accepted volunteers outside UP Cebu. So, I think that's also a start wherein we recognize na, syempre, we have to balance out tradition and the demand and appreciation for new skills to be found not only from us students, uh, from the students, but also from students of other schools and even mga working class then. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Patako Fest 2020. Um, Jay? Oh. Okay, uh, yes, uh, pasensya na, yeah. Um, hi, JJ. Uh, oh, and, hi, Red. Yes, and I have to thank you, I have to congratulate you for your successful attack of S last, that's was in February, no? Oh, February, thank you, yeah. thank you. I was supposed to be there, uh, actually. I, I was supposed to book a flight there because I was invited by one of your, ano, organi- one of your organizers, Johnny Lois, uh, who went to Manila for the WCS finals at nanalo yung manok nila, yung Manali Cebu team for the WCS. Wow. Yes, and they competed. They almost won WCS, actually. No. Yes, they almost won WCS, actually. They almost won. <laughs> but let's, oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, digress. Um, yeah, you, you said that you were an, you are an university, UP, UP Cebu, Cebu organization. So this yes. is recognized by the UP Cebu, by UP Cebu. Actually, ano, um, the organization behind this used to be yung mga batch orgs, may tinatawag kaming batch orgs. Uh, yearly, ano yun, parang first year batch orgs, second year, ganun. And then, um, slowly, pinasa siya sa organization known sa UP Cebu, that is UP Nichibunken. So, ayun. So, um, that is the organization na uh, behind, behind Otaku Fest. Behind Otaku Fest. Okay. Yes. Of course, um, whenever, whenever UP, when, whenever events in UP comes to mind, of course, ang nakikita lagi is UP AME, the benchmark when it comes to campus events. Yun nga, eh, Diliman. Yun na, UP Diliman. UP AME, they have been there for long, for long, for so longer long. Than than us. Us. Definitely no, longer than us. Kaso hindi na sila masyado nag-event ngayon. What sets you apart from, from, of course, iba yung dating ng, iba yung sa UP Ame. They're very much different. But what sets uh, Otaku Fest apart from other university-based uh, uh, organizations that, that anime-based organiz, anime, university-based anime J-culture organizations? Siguro if I have to say, syempre, it's one, it's one timing. Mm-hmm. We were, I mean, there, there are lots of um, anime-based or Japanese culture-based organizations in different schools. Uh-huh. Um, in Cebu, sa San Carlos, meron. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but timing, bakit? Kasi we were actually one of the, we were the first parang to bring out our event. As I've said, Otaku Fest 1, we organized it parang for everyone sana but mo, majority 90 95% that, that attended Otaku Fest 1 and parang two na rin were actually kami-kami rin UP Cebu students din so from that we tried to ano timing you know we tried to expand talagang we invited people from other schools we marketed the event we made it very affordable Talaga, yun nga. And then what separates us apart um, is basically when you hear the word otaku kasi, it has a very negative connotation nga, di ba, sa Japanese. Parang addicted ka sa anime. Yung parang hik- hikikumori ka na, hindi ka na lumalabas. Yung ganun. So sa amin, we take it, when you say otaku ka, you're 
you're actually a person who devotes your time, your resources to enjoying a particular hobby or because this hobby not only brings you fun, not only brings you joy, it can also bring you fulfillment. It can also be the one na parang to uplift you during times where you need um, something or someone to console you. Ganon. So, oh, di ba? So, yun yung ano, yun yung, okay, what brings us apart? Kasi yung otaku na yun, yung label na yun, the, the positive thinking namin from that label na otaku, we label everyone na ganon. Because each and every one of us, kahit ikaw red, siguro naman, meron kang isang hobby, isa or dalwa or marami, pero meron kayong parang ultimate hobby mo dyan na talagang yun yung go-to hobby mo na kahit kahit sa tingin mo, kahit gano'n na tayo katanda, <laughs> eh parang nandun pa rin siya. Nunood ka pa rin ng anime, magbabasa ka pa rin ng manga, yung tipong gano'n. So, with that, talagang parang binansagan namin lahat. Even those na mahilig sa K-pop, mm-hmm. in a way, otako din sila. Otako sila ng mga, ano nila, mga opa-opa nila. O. So, parang ano na rin. So, I guess, yun yun. yun that's, that's the parang the secret ingredient siguro or the, the thing that makes us different is because we accept and we welcome and we don't discriminate uh, mul- a multitude of hobbies. Talagang, if you want to express your hobby, if you want to be yourself, even for a day or two, come join us in Otako Fest. And mm-hmm. I am, we are very sure na you will meet someone in there who is also like-minded and who also shares the same passion as you do. So, okay. Yun. Yeah. And just a short question lang. Just a short question. Uh, Short question lang. Of course, uh, your the Fest 2020 reach um, from Manila. Marami mga Manila visitors from Manila coming to Cebu for Otaku Fest. And of course, not not only because of the big name, but of course, yung Otaku Fest, the name Otaku Fest, somewhat had already given a big, uh, parang meron ng name recall dito sa mga Manila. How did you, um, paano mo, uh, what can you say about those influx of visitors flying in from other provinces and other regions, including Manila, to come to your event? Just a short, ano lang, short reply lang. How do we, ano, I, can, uh, ano, can, yung, ano yung na, na, naramdaman nyo na may uh, mga pupunta uh, pag galing uh, from Manila? Na. Siyempre, ano, uh, masaya. Yun yun. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. um, ah, uh, I'd like to point this out, no? sana walang ma-offend, pero hindi kasi maiwasan eh, may mga pagka-regionalistic pa rin tayo. Mm-hmm. Aminin ko na, kahit ako. Pero at the end of the day kasi parang bakit? Eh, pare-parehas naman tayo Filipino, pare-parehas naman tayo mahilig sa anime, o sa manga, mm-hmm. o idol si, ano, Dao Ming Si, o kung sino-sino pang ano mo yan, di ba? Mm-hmm. We share different hobbies eh. So bakit? So, nung nalaman namin, hindi lang personally ako din, na dinadagsa namin. People are coming in from different provinces, even in Manila. Na big names in Manila are recognizing us. We felt, ano, happy. Yun yun. Tapos, siyempre, number two, appreciated. Mm-hmm. And then, siyempre, number three, we want to step up. Because we know we're not we're not yet at our kumbaga, peakest peak or highest glory. Kumbaga. Because if we really compare ourselves to the bigger events, the more organized, the more, parang, more, more, ano, like, yun nga. More organized, Manila. more funded events. Kumbaga. Oo, yun. Ano pa rin, marami pang kulang, marami pang room for improvement. But we'll yeah. get there. Yun. So, yeah. again, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, JJ, for telling us about Otaku Fest, and I hope to visit there once everything is all right already. Sige, we'll be, ano, we'll be expecting you, Red. Libre na entrance mo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jay? Sige, thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much, JJ and uh, Red. Now we will move on to our next guest. We have Joshua Varela from Topicon. So, Joshua, take it away. 
Hello, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, I'm Joshua Varela. Uh, I represent uh, Toficon, Toys and Figures uh, Convention in Cebu. Um, we started uh, we started organizing Toficon around 2014 or 2015, early 2015. Um, we've had five conventions since then. Uh, last year was the fifth one. This year, um, there's still hope for a sixth one because um, it's uh, we usually hold it every December. So um, I think there's a there's still hope to hold this year's Toficon, um, God willing. Um, we mainly are a very toy focused event. So um, from the name itself. Um, essentially the the event form because uh, we were all just a bunch of collectors who meet meet each other thanks to um, we meet each other regularly thanks to these events like otaku fest and archon and then um, we thought um, how about let's um, let's uh, sort of team up and um, make a toy centric event uh, something that um, Maybe, you know, uh, the toy enthusiasts of Cebu that are, are a little shy and uh, a little too shy to come out, maybe they can finally enter the fold uh, when it comes to a, a, a toy-centric event. So, And I think that's exactly what happened. Um, every year, we've been growing bigger. Um, we like to think that we, we make the event a little bigger. Uh, every year um we don't really organize other events except this event um we're not even actually a very uh formal organization we're just actually a bunch of friends who um you know um do this thing every year called toficon and um we just uh try to inject the most fun uh we try to add more um attractions every year uh every year i think we've been adding more content to the event um, as long as, you know, the venue allows us, we like to add more groups and more activities. Um, just last year, we had our first uh, Pokemon Go tournament in the event. Um, also, we've been sort of spearheading the lightsaber tournament scene of Cebu for the past few years. So I, I, I like to say that uh, maybe that's also one of the achievements that we've made. We've sort of built a lightsaber scene along with uh, our friends from Saberstorm Academy, headed by uh, our friend X. Uh, he's been a very big proponent to the uh, lightsaber movement and, in fact, has already infected me as well. I like to join these activities. Um, other than that, we have, you know, toy displays. We showcase a lot of the collectors themselves and especially um, their original works original Cebuano, Bisaya works. Um, uh, we like to promote, you know, local works. Um, we've at some point or uh, at some point we've also promoted um, local films. So basically it's, uh, it's sort of morphed into this very geeky con that doesn't necessarily just pertain to toys anymore. So uh, I think that's um, also the reason why we've been growing every year. Uh, the toys that we span range from the basic ones like action figures, uh, model kits, up to, you know, uh, really deluxe um, uh, female dolls. And um, we also have, you know, very interesting, we, we see die cast cars and um, we've even displayed some shoes in our last convention because um uh it was the the works of one of our um artists here in Cebu. Uh, that's also one thing that we like to promote the artists we like to uh, we like to promote um local cosplay props and cosplay costume builds um we that's also one thing that we've injected into the event so uh yeah um hopefully this year um you know, we we can still get to bring that same amount of joy to the community that we've sort of uh, built. Uh, we've sort of made this momentum. It, it, it'd be sad to 
uh, miss that momentum this year. So really hopeful that this year we can uh, go on with uh, TOFICON 2020. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Hi Joshua. Hi Joshua, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you right. Okay, yes. Uh, uh when uh when are you planning to when did you held your last event? Uh last December, uh December, uh, December. 2019. Where did you held your event? Where did you held it? Um last year we held it at Ayala Sancho Block. Uh, uh, the, yeah. I think Ayala. it's our newest mall. Uh, and um, this year, um, we still we still get feedback that Ayala is still very supportive of our event. So, um, yeah, one thing that gives us hope uh, we can push through. Yeah, uh, you said that you're going to, going to hold your holding your event on December. Are you still plan? Are are you still planning to hold the event? the same period this year despite the fact well of course understandable na the quarantine precautions would be a bit more lenient by that time but of course still greater there will be greater precautions for it because we still don't have a vaccine pero are you still on track to hold the event the same the same period this year december yes uh we're still really hoping to hold it this december um uh of course, we've been, you know, we've we've been sort of brainstorming exactly, you know, how how does this, you know, uh, pandemic change the course of events, you know, um, live events for our scene and worldwide. Actually, um, we've been sort of checking out how the world has been slowly, you know, going back into the normal uh, way that it's been uh, working. Like um, lately, you can actually see malls opening. Uh, I don't know if you've seen pictures of uh, a notable mall that we have here is uh, mm. SM Consolation and uh. there are really nice uh, pictures uh, that really portray that people can really actually do that social distancing thing even in a mall, right? So, um, you know, I think everyone's equally afraid of, you know, contracting the disease. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, I think after these many months of isolation and, you know, quarantine, I think people have already gotten used to, you know, being um, very aware of their surroundings and, um, you know, with their hygiene be being very conscious. So I think it's really possible for, you know, this December, as long as we, you know, we stick to any guidelines that, you know, the government or the mall or, you know, our, our health um, supervisions can, you know, enforce, we would likely be able to do that. Um, I think another reason why um, Toficon is very doable with, you know, that type of scenario, it's because, you know, uh, honestly, the collectors like the space, right? So mm -hmm. the collectors, when they display their, their, you know, their pieces, their valuables, they actually, um, they actually like the distance more, which really favors our event in a way. Because um, yes, the social distancing really lightened the load because we really need to, you know, uh, really need. There's there's an amount of security that we have to hold up in terms of you know um, the physical space of the people, you know, the traffic. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's not an event where you can. It's it's not an event where you can actually bump shoulders with because um, you'll never know what expensive thing you can bump into stuff like that so in a way Toficon has already been that type of event where um you know space uh, personal space physical spacing is actually essential so mm -hmm. i think it's really doable uh, i think it's really doable and um you know w with regards to you know events in general mm -hmm. um uh, as you as you said, I think you mentioned earlier, we've already been having events lately, like mm -hmm. weddings. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's possible. Um, yeah, it's 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 still doable. I mean, yeah, there will be a limited you know capacity. The capacity will be divided into half or even uh, a third of of the normal capacity. But um, one thing about Toficon as well is it's 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 flexible in that sense where um 
the the the, the con goers don't really need to stay there the whole day. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing I noticed. Um, people don't really go to our event to stay there from morning to evening. They they stay in the mall from morning to evening, but they don't stay inside the event area from morning to evening. They like to go out uh, every now and then. Go go throughout the mall. Uh, ever since uh, our second Toficon, we've been having it in malls. So I think our our you know the the local toy community has been used to that sense where the event happens in a mall. So uh, when you want to limit the space, uh, when you want to limit the the guests inside the venue area, um, mm-hmm. I think that's doable. We can really do that sort of headcount thing where we limit the the number of people at a given time, and then once someone goes out, someone else can go in. I think that's a very doable system. Um, yeah, I think there are many many ways to implement the social distancing. With regards to our event, because uh, as I said, I think the Toficon, at least the Toficon event scene, at least is uh, it's very applicable to the, the people that go to our event because they're really accustomed to uh, personal space. Mm-hmm. And lastly, I just like to ask you how how are you how are your uh, members or the Koi community in Cebu is doing right now, especially during this pandemic of course um we all know that uh, toy groups are sharing share a common bond together when it comes to when it comes to toys and of course um we all know that the big uh, example of a very good organization among toy collectors is the, 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 the toy con the toy con people na isa silang malaking grupo so how are toy collectors in cebu are coping up with the pandemic uh, how are you do you talk about uh and how do you how do you discuss yourselves uh, to support each other? How, we, how do you dis- support each other? Right, that's actually very fun to talk about because the, the toy scene actually right now is actually very alive. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it, I find it very interesting where um, the, the toy collectors can become really creative with how to acquire the, their you know, collectibles right now because um, uh, you know, you know, uh, First, um, right now, what's happening uh, in the the toy community? Um, because the community is is really it's 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 very varied. I think I'm sure you're aware, especially with ToyCon, um, yeah. the toy community basically in any city will be very divided um, according to you know the the uh, what line you collect. Um, the thing is with Cebu, Cebu City is very small. So a lot of those um, toy groups really intersect. I mean, even the Manila groups intersect a lot. I, I'm aware of that. I'm also part of those, a lot of those Manila groups. But uh, here in Cebu, because it's a very small city, uh, but it's a very diverse city, all of those groups uh, actually really uh, overlap each other more than, I think, a typic, uh, more than the other cities that you, you might be accustomed to. So um, the fun thing there is... Uh, uh, right now, I don't know if you've noticed the barter system that's been happening around the Philippines. Um, it's it's a very interesting thing that you know people have found uh, a way to exchange things because you know people have no uh, income source of income right now. They do the barter system, and then the it, first it was um, the barter anything system, and then and then uh, someone. Uh, brought me into the barter the toy barter scene i think it was a uh, jj um i got into the toy toy barter system and, and it's actually happening a lot of a lot of the collectors here are bartering things and um you know uh, i don't know how maybe <laughs> they like to meet up uh, you know on supply runs and um it's it's very interesting you know knowing um how you know cebu is very segregated very you know there are a lot of boundaries so that's one thing that's very interesting. The, the barter, I, I've actually bartered two things already so far. Uh, it's very fun. Uh, another thing is, um, and I've noticed um, a lot of our shops here uh, have been doing uh, live Facebook auctions where, um, you know, they, yeah, live Facebook auctions. Um, they like to uh, sell off items and they don't even need you to pay right now. 
um, because you'll you'll be getting the item after the quarantines, so you can pay them after the quarantines as well. So it's a, it's a very win-win situation. It's sort of like a promise where once the quarantines end, you know, both sides will get what they want. You know, the shops will get paid and the collectors will get their toys. Uh, another thing, um, uh, I've, with with regards to you know the the Tofikon organizers um, uh, amongst uh, ourselves, um, what my my uh, my colleagues are actually um, they're uh, they're the they're they're very active with uh th their cebu x geeks um their 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 activities over there at that uh that venue at cebu x geeks i'm not sure if you're aware of that um um those those guys are you know holding um facebook live streams they like to hang out uh and in the future we're doing also um toy reviews um you know all those a lot of geeky activities that we can do uh, uh, online uh, that people can actually watch and enjoy. Um, so that's one venue that, you know, is um, sort of, you know, filling the content for the Cebuano uh, collector scene. Also, uh, another is, um, I'm aware that the Saber Storm Academy guys are, are always working out. So uh, I'm sure a lot, a lot of you guys have been noticing how people are, Either if you're in this quarantine, you get you're getting bigger, or you're getting buffer. So it's it's one of those two. So uh, um, the the guys from the Saber Storm Academy, I'm sure, are 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 still holding up their end with you know the workouts and the uh, exercises. Uh, it's one thing that they're promoting is staying fit in this quarantine. Um, another is um, since people are all all just staying home here in Cebu. Um, of course, the toy photography thing is a, a, a strong thing that I've been seeing with the community. People have been, you know, taking out their even their older toys from, you know, in their um, closet and in their storage um, storage areas, and they've been bringing it out and, you know, just taking pictures. Um, you can actually, you know, you have you you you'll be surprised of how fun it is actually to take pictures of even your simplest, your oldest toys. Um, that's one activity that the Cebuano collectors have been doing. And then uh, maybe lastly, um, with our Facebook page, I guess, uh, with the Toficon Facebook page, uh, we've been trying to, we, we're not, we're not really, you know, that active. We're not doing things every day, but, you know, we like to post things there that um, are a little helpful for everyone during this quarantine you know, some good news and all. And, you know, a little informative stuff, stuff that, you know, you can watch while you're bored. Yes. You know, so that's also a little thing that we've been doing. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Joshua, for the very, very um, comprehensive uh, we, uh, comprehensive story of what you're yeah, doing. Pretty much an update for the toy community. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. <laughs> all right. Okay, thank you very thank much, you, Joshua yeah. Varela from Toficon. And now... And now we move on to our guest from the ArtCon, ArtCon Cebu. Ladies and gentlemen, Jolo Escaño. Jolo, take it away. All right. So, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jolo Escaño. I am the head organizer for ArtCon Cebu. Um, just so that um, everybody will know, ArtCon means anime, role-playing, games, comics, and hobbies convention. So the history of ArtCon is that basically it started way back 2004. Um, at the old Sacred Heart uh, campus. Um, it was founded by just a bunch of geeks. It was even called initially the Alternative Hobbies Club. So it's really crazy because like from a club group activity, it grew from that to being a, uh, a they started um, accepting people from outside uh, their campus. Then it grew to a mall type event and finally, for the first time last year, we were able to have a convention type event. So uh, I just want to focus that um, Archon, we are a convention with a cause. So uh, with that, like we are, our efforts are usually for collaborative efforts for um, building and assisting the community. So 
Yeah, last year was our 16th year. So we've been um, pretty, like, it, it, Arcon is the oldest um, hobbyist convention here in Cebu. And yeah, just to state lang, uh, one of the, uh, one of the um, important, like, uh, highlights that we did was that way back uh, 2017, we were able to donate 200,000 to our um, charity, the Blue Plate Project. So that group is a uh, initiative from Ateneo that uh, feeds the impoverished, uh, impoverished peoples uh, in the mountain barangays. And yes, yeah, speaking of that, I just wanna like, Arcon is just basically a two day um, event in a weekend where like people can just uh, go geek out have fun. And I just like want to share with you guys how like there was this person, a close friend of mine, see Kurt Palomaria, uh, speaking of Cebu X Geeks. He was able to visit uh, our event way back 2018. And uh, he had an article I could share with you guys afterwards that uh, he felt initially left out. He felt like he was an older geek and everything. But quoting from uh, the ending of his article, he just said that my heart swelled. I felt powerless against it. I held back tears with my arms raised. I joined the crowd and we were singing at the top of our lungs. To my surprise, I felt something that I haven't really felt much in my life. And I felt like I finally belonged. So that was him like watching the stage. And then when they uh, watching what was happening on the stage and they were playing the ending of uh, Samurai X. So yeah. Um, so talking about our feats and accomplishments, um, so speaking of collaborations, uh, we've been trying to be, we've been up, uh, up to recent, like 2016, we've been trying to um, show to the community that our, our efforts are really for like building the community. Uh, we had a Game of Thrones block screening at the Fort San Pedro and for our, um, to invite more people, schools to um, rid the negativity of thinking that um, uh, uh, geeks are like um, geeks are like sociable and everything. We're trying to rid the negative stigma of that. And with that, um, yeah, we were inviting. We were trying to change that. So we had road shows. We went to USJR, thanks to one of the uh, hobbyists and close friends of ours, Josh and Reno. And also we went to the Bulacau school uh, from an invitation from one of the members of team class S, Siegfried and Arrow. So even with that, we've also tried to reach as far as uh, Dumaguete to uh, invite people. We personally we went there to um, promote Arcon and uh, sell our tickets and promote to them our support. And also for we have, we've also been trying, we've been, Arcon has been like, a, it, it's crazy how much it grew from a, a small event. So we were before needing of a platform, but right now Arcon is the platform. So we were really proud that we were able to hone and focus and like uh, assist events. And many, many communities that were like budding. Uh, I believe uh, 2018, we were, that was one of the first debuts of the Sabres term. Uh, they were able to, um, Perform there live on stage. Also, there were um, uh, we were able. It was the first time for us opening, being opening our doors to new communities, like putting them on the main stage. There was the Dungeoneers Guild, and we also tried to. If there's any uh, community that ever there's a hobbyist, a person in need, we really try to uh, share to um, using our platform to uh, raise awareness. Uh, speaking of, there's this. Uh, 16 year old right now, uh, Carl Ko, that made a Overwatch uh, design uh, map contest. Uh, he, he joined that, and yeah, it's really impressive because it is it uh, it resembles um, the Simala. And another impressive feat that we were really proud of is that we show that um, our hobbyist industry is also a big uh, factor in the creative industry. So last year in the Cebu Design Week, September, we were like among the crowd favorites. 
because uh, during that time we were able to, we had a booth, we were able to sell uh, our, we were able to invite some of our lucky artists and uh, vendors to be able to show to um, the regular society as to like a, a sneak peek as to what's in Archon. And uh, what culminated in our participation in that event is that we had a cosplay couture fashion show. So we had props makers, cosplayers here in Cebu have their works uh, showcased alongside the works of Kenneth Kobunpue. And what was really impressive was that we were, our cosplayers using scrap uh, fabrics and materials discarded from the furniture industry, they were able to make impressive medieval type costumes. So yeah, um, that was with coordination of the sponsor, Metabel Furniture. And aside from that, we also have a lot of uh, personal endeavors. We really work a lot also with Max McKeeling from uh, Unity and Sesu, Cebu Esports United. So it was because of uh, us, that uh, Max as well, uh, actually the four of us, Max McKeeling, uh, uh, me, Claire Cordelia and Mel Bakir, and we were able to make the Mayor's Cup. Uh, that was, I think, one of the first uh, collaborations within esports and the government. And I believe that that created a large ripple. And as well as the Rules of Survival Summer Festival, collaborating, uh, getting uh, sponsored by Nemo TV, and crossing it with actual paintball on the event area. And Speaking of other charitable causes as well, we are really uh, proud because uh, this year we had a dear friend and member of ours, uh, of our community that had um, congenital heart disease. And with the funds of Arcon and uh, Cebu Esports United, we were able to raise 120,000 for Gwen Felicida. So, cause she was like down to uh, one heart valve remaining and with our joint efforts, we were able to help. And just an update, she was able to have a successful operation and is recuperating. So thanks to everybody that donated and um, the contributions, we were able to save a life. And one of the most recent things that we did right now, um, an action, a response to the uh, COVID pandemic is that um, along with some of the organizers of Archon and even one of the um, uh, merchants from Arcon, we were able to create something called the Cebu Backliners. So that is a group that provides that our, our goal was to provide or is to divide, uh, is to um, provide PPEs for the frontliners here in Cebu. So we created with our existing platform, we created a new group to show awareness to um, let people realize that we we can be proactive at our homes, we can donate. And it was a, a really beautiful mesh because we were able, the logistics, the logistics um, connections of one of our members, um, the, the financial consultation, the supplier connection, the public relations. So with all of that, we were able to make a amazing group and our goal was 640,000 and we were able to raise more than 430,000 right now. So yeah, that is, um, yeah, that's uh, Archon so far. Okay, wow. Uh, wow, I've been hearing your story and wow, you're just magical <laughs> to see here that you were able to reach that kind of money to help to help other to help people lalo na yung mga may sakit it's very much it's very much how how the community should work and how the community should work together as one i mean this is what we need right now unity unity yeah. among all among all event organizers kasi right now this um this crisis will never end until possibly next year. As an event organizer, what is your thinking about our, how would you go how would you think about holding um charity event? Of course, you hold charity events. I I, I of course you you said that you are a convention with a cost. 
Mm-hmm. How would you put this cost to help all of our, not only just our, if you were an organizer, how would you create an event that not only would, that not would only help our frontliners and backliners, especially that would help our frontliners and backliners, especially during this time pandemic, without having to resort in get being physical or yung having yung mga tao lumalabas. How, it, hypothetical, as an organizer, how would you do it? Okay, um, so thank you for that question. So, uh, yeah, definitely for us, it is a definite no-no for like physical contact, physical interaction with people. Um, right now, we're still in the early phases of uh, the pandemic and we don't know when there will be a second wave. So mm-hmm. uh, for us, uh, like it's basically we want to keep we want to keep everybody active um positive in a good sense a positive mindset and what we do like a a sample our sample template for Cebu backliners is that if they can give a uh, financial amount uh Mm -hmm. we 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 greatly um, appreciate that as we show them liquidation transparency that this goes directly to the frontliners and we have uh, photos to it to show to show and if there are people that are not financially capable we also have um we invite influencers or people to uh just simply share or spread the word because even though you may not you may you may have friends that can so aside from that um we're even to we were even uh, even even uh, even able to collaborate with um the Cebu local music industry. So with the works of uh, Jude Gitamundo, we were able to make a uh, collaborative song showing the frontliners and local artists here, uh, titled entitled In Ipanumpa Ko. So that was like, just to show people that don't lose hope. So yes. yeah, they're like, yeah. So we just have to be more creative. And I, um, Arkon even really, uh, really acknowledged and, uh, appreciated the efforts of one of the Manila organizers cosplay that we actually had a music video recently. Yeah, that, the uh, music video that we, I featured on the Manila Times. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it showed that also the cosplayers by um, uh, showing their uh, collaborative efforts, singing, we had even special guests there, and they were able to show that, yeah, keep positive, here are guidelines as to what you can do. You can be a hero as well. Yeah. Of course, being one of the oldest events in the country, of course, not just only in Cebu, but also in the country as well. You've been here for 16 years. Uh, you've seen so many changes in the landscape of pop culture events here, not only just in your province in Cebu, but also across Metro Manila and across the nation. What can you and what can you say about this unprecedented event affecting not just your event, not just your event, but also other events here and abroad. Mm-hmm. So uh, for me, like, yes, this is definitely a big blow for the event industry in general. Um, a lot of people that are, uh, especially for the people that are um, relying solely on like um, full employment using events, people that are the hosts, the the technical people, the the rentables. It it may seem like re- it may seem really small, but these people are also the people that bring joy, bring positivity. And um, I know that really it really frustrates that these people can't uh, they can't uh, they can't be in their element right now. So it's. Uh, Right now, like I, I know I've been, uh, uh, we've been discussing, like us uh, with some people, like uh, Max McKeely, We've been finding more ways to be proactive, and right now, I think this is right. Uh, everybody's still in the brainstorming uh, phase. I know there's even like a proactive talks as to um, how can this lead to, how can this lead to, like what is the next step? What is, how can the events industry evolve from this? So. Right now, I cannot give a uh, definite solution, but I am definitely there for uh, collaborative talks 
to and aid with whatever um, expertise I have to help um, lessen and um, uh, uh, stop the curve of uh, this. Okay. Thank you very much, Jolu, and uh, I'm I'm very much uh, happy to hear about your event and very much uh, I'm very much surprised about uh, your your very much surprised about what you're doing for your community as a whole. Thank you very much, Jolu. Jay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Jolu Scanu of Arcon. And okay, so we will now move on to our panel discussion red that we will bring yes. everybody back and you will be moderating the discussion ready ka na you ready na ako, of course i have right, so okay. many questions of course pero uh, of course hearing all of them hearing all of all of the organizers uh they have they, they have different event strategies they have very they have different lahat kayo may iba't iba kayong mga strategies whenever whenever it comes to uh holding events now the first question i want to ask you uh, specifically for those who hold ticketed events. Right now, some some of your revenue right now is based mainly on ticketed events. Some of you. Would you want to, of course, when it comes to events, of course, if you want, kailangan maraming tao pupunta. But in order to get physical in order to abide by the physical distancing rules you have to lessen the, the lessen the number of crowd crowds and one way is to lessen the number of tickets but that is a double-edged sword mm -hmm. it can affect your finances so would you agree or would you accept the fact that you have to you have to limit the number of people, limit the number of tickets selling, tickets sold to your to event attendees, but risk the very, very financing, very much funding that you expect for your events. So uh, you can answer. Anyone can answer. Oh, so um tiki. so I'll take the no start to um ticketed events well again we all know um uh, large hobby conventions hindi nga lang some eh. most uh revenue finances uh, for, of large hobby conventions come from ticket sales um it's a big fact naman sa hobby conventions be it manila outside the Philippines, even in Cebu. And, yeah, speaking, um, syempre, the, from Otakofe's perspective and from a personal perspective, yes, we are open naman to limiting the number of attendees per day. Um, we can, there's actually a lot of ways to do it naman. Kasi if we really want to, we can, um, how about, ano, uh, hold the event longer? Or, ano, um, get a more, parang, open or a bigger venue? There's a lot of things na we can do in order to hold an event and still keep the event afloat financially. Um without sacrificing the quality of the event. So, yeah, for Otaku Fest, I don't know, we're open naman because at the end of the day, safety pa rin number one, especially in this type of um, virus wherein there's no vaccine and it really targets the immunocompromised, the younger people and even the elder ones. So, plus we still don't know if asymptomatic carriers although there are studies na they could post they they pose a threat talaga but ayun nga um we still don't know to what extent these asymptomatic carriers can do damage pero there are there are studies na they can really spread the virus so yeah that's from otaku fest sige anyone 
I'd also like to point something out. Like what what JJ said actually made a lot of sense. But uh, on our end, as I know, for for esports, the the advantage that we have as uh, as in the esports niche is that we can have a very small production set um, and have like even just basically turn the event into something for free and just la- have like people watch it all over the internet. The thing is, we can actually adapt to that. Like uh, we are the uh, sort of round table. So I guess it's best if we help each other out. Uh, we can share some tips here and there, like how we can do stuff like that. Um, we can basically uh, even have the event physically, but limit it to like a couple of people, just a couple of people. And then we just have to like, you know, just, just imagine um, Unang Hire from uh, you know, t- talk shows, but an, yeah, an event. Shows. Yeah, yeah, like talk shows, but it's an event. And we can still have the segments that we want, well, except for like having special guests fly into Cebu. That is sort of complicated, but we could work something out. You know? We can always work something out. We are... Uh, <laughs> This uh, this panel is full of intelligent people, so it's it's <laughs> we should really help each other. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. Others, the others. Any any of you? Any ideas? Uh, with regards to that, uh, with what Max said, um, maybe events could go, you know, with a free route. Um, actually, Toficon has been a free admission event since the first one, and we haven't. Uh, done any ticketing ever since um, it's it's actually a very easy thing for us to transition into because um, we don't need to limit the ticket sales per se we just need to limit the the people that go into the event at a certain time and so you know um, and then you know people like I said earlier in our event um, people don't really stay there so we can let them in once someone goes out, another one goes in, we can do that kind of system. So I think that system can also be done with your events, I think. You know, so uh, you know, one in, one out type of system. That's one thing I think that can be applicable with regards to that, you know, with regards to the ticketing. If you guys go, you know, the, the free route, the free admission route. Like 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. <laughs> Exactly like Seven Eleven, you know, with 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 all the alcohol, you know, the the the, the shoe bath, you know, yeah. whole package. Yeah. <laughs> they actually, have a everyone, you know, <laughs> they sell you plastic gloves for one peso. Marketing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, you know, if 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 it protects you, if it does the job, you know, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jolu. All right, so um, for my end, uh, for so uh, uh, just to update you guys, uh, in Arcon, uh, we have a uh, we are really democratic. Even though I am the head organizer, I still highly value my co um, co heads, and we always uh, make a unified decision. But for my personal opinion. Um, for us to have a 50% capacity or like lessening the amount of tickets um, for the good of um, uh, Arcon and uh, for it resonating to us being a convention with the cause, we, in, we uh, I, I myself cannot um, uh, imagine the ne- negative implications of uh, us realizing that um, a person would have, uh, would have to be, I would have been uh, when they, they contracted um, the coronavirus during our event, so for us, like, uh, yeah, we really want to foster. We really want to continue think, um, focusing on like um, our community safety as much as um, as much as we would want to. We are that we are one of the revenues that the people uh, look forward to. Uh, if like Otaku Fest is the um, the the biggest in the first quarter we would like to believe that we are like the ending quarter but for us like what is a um a small amount of like uh waiting compared to like uh, a 
a, a life of like suffering or like a regret knowing that uh, we've uh, we've been held liable so for us um like uh there i know, I know that there's still a lot of options so there's still a lot of like viable ways to find uh to find uh to make a an event happen nonetheless but um knowing from our experience like a a slight delay having temperature checks having all the protocols um it will definitely create a uh, huge uh line at the same time we are our type of events is really um it really is reliant on like uh the physical experience the physical touch so there will be a lot of like uh physical contacting uh, definitely for no definitely for now there can't be people with those like signages saying like free hugs and everything unless like you're in like full ppe and everything so uh yeah that's um my personal opinion okay and griff uh, what can you say about uh what can you say about uh limiting ticket sales of course your event is free you're holding it in malls but yes. uh, hypothetically, if you were to hold a ticket to the event and you were given, you, I, of course, if you've given the devil a deep blue sea, mm. either you limit the number of people by limiting tickets, but you have to sacrifice the, you have to sacrifice yung gross, eh, the gross, mm. the gross uh, revenue that you are expecting for an event. Mm. What can you say about it? Actually, um, yes, hypothetically, if we do that one, we are still bound by the guidance or the um, the rules of the mall that we are um, having the event. Uh, as what I mentioned, the IATF is um, focusing on malls because as much as we know, the malls is the the number one place where people gather and flock and stay from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So I think um, since we are client-based, all of our proceedings or all of our, all of our um, mandates will be coming from the mall client itself. Last week, I was able to talk with one of our clients and they mentioned that Indeed, uh, it's very difficult for them to reduce the capacity of the mall goers because um, they they mentioned that cosplay event is their top five um, source of food traffic. You can, can you, if you can imagine, they li literally mentioned cosplay as one of their um, most awaited events because that's their way when they increase up to uh three hundred percent times three of the people going to a mall because of having a cosplay event now of course with this pandemic and of course with this quarantine uh i'm sure they have their own ways of limiting people to coming in so less people coming into the mall less people going to the event so by now that's my stand on how i can reduce um the number of going to the people joining on uh, mall initiated events, it's really up to the client. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, all. I, uh, I have to pull out this comment from Captain Pounda. Sinabi niya, I think it's related to our question. That would be chaos. There would be long lines outside the event entrance. It's very possible for an increase of Team Labas. Uh, of course, we all understand what yung Team Labas means. Yung the other people roaming around the venue when, <laughs> when they're not. Ano, hindi sila nakabili ng ticket. They're just roaming around the venue. It happens all the time here in Manila. We are so focused on seeing what we can do inside the event that we are forgetting what could happen outside if we implement such rules. I hope someone develops a solution that would be effective. Your thoughts, guys? Well, um, for one, di ba, um, siguro we can put a part of Assuming ha, na we organize, let's say we we hold an event, a live event, even though there's an ongoing pandemic, and we follow the guidelines for social distancing, for ventilation, and all those things, for safety measures lang. Um, 
for those naman ng mga team labas, we can actually, ano naman, parang give them snippets para um, on what is happening inside. Siguro we can put a uh, TV or a live screen for games or ongoing ano, um, games uh, that's being held or some of the um, toys can be displayed outside the entrance for people to parang get a glimpse lang. Um, we can improve naman on those things. But again, um, as mentioned by Sir Griffith kanina and even um, Sir Joshua from Toficon, um, they are this they are really parang wall-based events nga. And at the end of the day, even if, you know, uh, Team Labas, if, even if you belong to this Team Labas, um, parang ang common na kasi is, ang common thing that is happening is these hobby conventions are being held inside malls or inside convention halls. And at the end of the day, this... Um, locations, they have their own way of restrict, uh, restricting people, restricting traffic. So, dun pa lang, tatamaan ka na kasi hindi ka makakapasok sa mall or hindi ka papapasokin dun sa ano, convention center by those, ano, ha, those, those people who own and secure the event. Uh, no, sorry, the location pa lang. Then, yun nga, added layer pa yung entrance ng event convention. So, inevitably, yun nga, kawawa talaga yung team laba. So, again, we can propose things, parang give them, give these people a glimpse lang of what is happening outside or siguro we can make it parang, um, I, I saw this in para international conventions like Comic Con or San Diego Con. Yung tipong, yung mga cosplay nila parang nasa labas, nasa outdoors. So kahit yung mga lumilinya pa lang, na, nakikita na nila yung mga nagko-cosplay, pwede na sila magpa-picture, ganun. So dun pa lang may added, may experience na, kumbaga. So we can do those things naman given that we can find a suitable venue and we can observe the guidelines for safety. Pero I'd also like to mention, once again, yung sinabi nga ni Sir Jolo, um, there's no price for safety talaga. Talagang yun yung number one concern. Not only sa organizers, not only dun sa mga event personnel, but most especially dun sa congoers. That's something na we really have to take into consideration. Are we willing to um, expose people to that risk? And if so, yun nga, yung what will happen, worst case scenario, if someone gets infected or during our event, yun, pag contact tracing, yung ganun. Because that's, that's bad PR. That's, that's going to affect talaga. Ano. So, yeah, that's my two cents. Any more? Kayo, anyone? Um, with regard to that, um, I think, I think I have something to add um, regarding that. Um, uh, I think JJ mentioned it, it will really depend on the venue because he was talking about, you know, most events happening in malls lately. Um, that's one of the luxuries that Toficon actually um, sort of enjoys that it, um, well, we don't really have the budget to hold it in, you know, convention centers like that. So we usually hold it in in mall events you know tie up um you know projects uh, xd like that so um in that sense we we always hold it in a mall and technically wala kaming team labas you parang ganun yung nangyayari we don't have a team labas because even team labas is inside a mall inside a mall and you know um enjoying and um with regards to that you know even our team labas within the mall um i'm actually looking at pictures now i i can't you know, put it up on the screen. But if you guys want to see it for yourself, the Freeman, the Freeman, uh, it's a Cebu newspaper. The Freeman has pictures of, you know, again, malls already doing that uh, social distancing thing. Uh, I'm not saying it's the safest thing in the world. I'm just saying it's maybe a, a good step towards that. 
And then with regards to that, again, um, I, another factor is the time. I think, um, uh, you know, sadly for, for the other events so far that have been canceled this year and then the, the, the closer ones that have to be canceled, that's very understandable. Um, even we still have the chance of canceling because we don't know what can happen by December. If, if the picture is still the same, then definitely we're not going to, you know, gamble the event. But if by then, if by December, um, you know, it's, 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 it's doable, it's possible, you know, um, everyone can cooperate and do it right. You know, definitely we have a little bit of, again, another luxury of possibly having our event uh, at a later time of the year, latest literally at, at December. So that's one luxury that we have, we currently have right now. We have the time to plan uh, and see if if it's actually possible to hold an event like that. Again, we're not really completely saying that um, you know everything will be okay by December. Uh, with regards to that, again, lastly, I want to add. Um, eventually, you know, Cebu events have to go forward. Eventually, uh, if not this year, you know, we're not gonna force it. Um, we're definitely not gonna go do something that. You know, if we can't do it right, then definitely we won't do it at all, right? So I think we all agree on that. But again, um, there's the issue of live events in Cebu, everywhere actually, that have to come back eventually because we have, you know, our suppliers, you know, these guys. If if we are not around, us organizers, our events aren't around, these businesses go, you know, potentially bankrupt. Um, the venues... You know, um, these people also have, you know, employees that they have to feed, uh, employees they have to pay, and they need work as well. And, you know, um, that's the sad thing about events. Um, we can, it's a little easy for us organizers to, you know, cancel our events, but um, that's another project um, among the suppliers that they lose, you know. Um, you know, every event that gets canceled, um, these, these, Events rely on, you know, suppliers, sound system, video, uh, manpower, and these guys don't have work until we give them work. So, um, again, I'm not forcing the issue. I'm not forcing, you know, everyone should go back to events. But eventually, Cebu has to go back. Cebu has to come back into live events. I want to I wanna mention that there's actually a movement for that. Um, um, there's a national live events coalition form. Um, um, you know, you guys can look up to it where um, it's actually, you know, it's sort of like a co-op where, you know, events are really looking into the safest way to come back into events. Because again, you know, so many people are losing jobs and so many people are, aren't getting, you know, projects because of the absence of the event. So um, uh, that's it. You know, eventually we have to find ways to come back. That's, that's, that's all I'm... <laughs> Okay, uh, before lang before ko lang ma ma go back dun sa ano kay Jolo. I let me show you something here. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa yung team labas. Ayan, this from Ozin Fest 2014. And yan, just this is from 2014. And of course, uh well, it's very much representative of how Team Labas is, right? Nung before the BC, before Corona, before the pandemic. So how are you going to? How are you going to? Ano, how are you going to? Uh, so resolve that, especially pag ganyang kahaba mga pila. Alright, if I may. Jolu, Jolu, yes, go Jolu. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I guess like right now, uh, like it's really not for me. Like the feasibility, we always have to think about the feasibility. Imagine the situations as like. Um, how do we apply it? But for me, I think the next step right now is just like um, it's a we need an evolution. Like we need to digitalize. So either so why either that becomes the new norm or it's a um, implementation. You just um, uh, an an addition, but maybe we need a new hashtag. Like maybe hashtag team online. Because um, I also forgot to mention there were like some there was also there's a community that um, Archon also supports and that's um, game development. So in 
si I'm, I'm in particular uh, Cebu Game Dev. So uh, game development, if you guys didn't know, said from the um, Cebu Business Month, they mentioned that game development is one of the new emerging pillars in the creative industry. So they have a lot of they have a lot of potential, and they um, the fact that you can gamify and they're merging it, uh, they're merging their applications to traditional businesses. It's um, uh, really groundbreaking, and we might not we might not know it might happen sooner or later. Maybe people can visit the convention through virtual reality through VR. They can um, then uh, we can um, uh, commission our game developers to uh, create a uh, a virtual space of your event venue. So that can be another option. So. Aside from that, there's always you can always look into the um, feasibility of the online conventions. I know for once, uh, I know that uh, I saw uh, Sir Jay uh, work on it and um, uh, had an online convention. But if we just um, uh, really dig and researched more on the feasibility, having breakout rooms, having um, finding more feasible ways to like uh, convert what is usually we requ that usually requires you to be physically there to convert it digitally so yeah that's uh, that's my opinion any other opinions any other okay uh, for me um also with the bon adori and um also with the rest of the conventions or the events uh, with my co-organizers, just because you are Team Labas does not mean that we can no longer take care of you. So we always find ways to make sure that even though you can't join the event inside and you are uh, making a line, we also want to make sure that you are also being protected by our guidelines and by the guidelines of our client. And not only are we also helping you, but the government as well is also helping our event. So, for example, um, in Bon Odori, we always ask guidance or assistance from the government. Uh, if last year, there was no pandemic, but we still required them, their presence to be inside and outside of our event. Not only for pandemic, but also for other ways that we can imagine what will happen if you are lining or inside the event. So basically, there's for me, for me, there's no chaos if you are Team Labas or if you are a Congor. Because number one, if you yourself are sensible enough or if you are knowledgeable enough that there is a pandemic going on and you have to form this line, I think it's you have to start from yourself that you have to distance yourself from the rest. Like um like yeah, the one meter advance or like go to another time where people are less like that one so i think for me and for my co-organizers there is actually no chaos if you will just participate follow the guidelines and make sure that you are not a carrier or you're not um a victim of the pandemic so what's also good with mall initiated events is that the mall actually is making sure that they are following the guidelines that is being imposed. So, like, for example, for us, since we are an open event and we don't have any tickets, so it doesn't mean that we have to let people come in. The clients themselves request or demand that we are not allowed to occupy as much people and the people with their um, common sense must follow the guidelines. So I hope that answered the question of the viewer. Okay. So let's again pull up other questions from Facebook. Ito, uh, from Alne. Uh, this is for Joshua. Uh, will there be a possibility of having a BJD display on Toficon this year? Yes, um, it actually really will depend on the the collectors themselves, what they bring to the event. Um, we personally, as the organizers, we just give the avenue 
to the collectors themselves uh, and it's up to them what they will display um but last year we did start displaying dolls actually um so there's a very big chance that um if we do have the collectors in our you know in who who join the event and they can get to bring their bjd dolls uh, or you know bjd uh, figures um Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a very big possibility that BJDs can be displayed in this year. So, yeah. Again, uh, to our viewers right now, you can still co ask questions. We, we still uh, accept. We accept your questions. Just uh, comment on comment on the comment box below, and we we might ask some of your questions. See, I'm not just. Uh, we're not just only discussing here. We are part of this conversation because, of course, not only you are not only part of the big Cebu event, but also every single person here in the country uh, loves events, loves pop culture events, and uh, it affects not just me, not just not just us, but also every single one of us who are involved in events as well. So, uh, Jolo, can you answer this? Um, I, Si Raul Gabriel Puzon says that I would like to ask if there's a possibility of having ArchCon 2020 on your plan. And if it pushes through, would there be a need to implement and enforce health and safety protocols and as well as minimizing physical contact via physical distancing? And I guess it also, uh, I'd also like to pose this question to other, to other organizations as well. If you're going to hold your events, would you do different um, protocols uh, as enforced by the government? Okay. Um, so, uh, coincidentally, like, I, uh, I was trying to tackle the comment of Raul Buzot while I was talking prior, but um, I think I already said my sentiments, but right now I would just want to better let people uh, visualize the implications of the what ifs for feasibility, uh, feasibility wise. So um, seeing your picture uh, read, uh, seeing the, the line, imagine what more if uh, there was like a, the social distancing uh, lining up, so that's already gonna be, I think it's already, it's really cramped and that would already take the whole floor. So if you would practice social distancing, that would probably take up the whole mall, even like uh, if you're expecting a thousand people. And that's, we know that that's also like, that's a uh, that's a decent number, but we know that can go more. That can really definitely make a line that can even like, uh, you see it outside, outside the mall. So lining up can take you even longer. And aside from that, like, um, again, for me, like uh, prevention is better than cure. So, like, the contact tracing will be uh, crazy, like uh, crazy. How to like uh, if you had like a, a thousand already, and then uh, to contact trace like how many people went inside the mall, how many people were um uh, in our event. So, um, it's we know we know it can we can, we can enforce it. But again, like uh, for the, um, I, I can't, uh, once I get the final uh, decision with my uh, um, deciding body, we can, we'll be making an announcement definitely by this month of June, whether we'll be canceling or not. But we're leaning towards um, uh, postponing. Okay. Thanks, Jolo. Other organizers, uh, do you have any plans, if everyone you have plans to all events? Actually, for us, for CCG, um, not to give good, uh, not to give like um, uplifting uh, our souls, but our clients are thinking that they can have their events this year. Um, they have high hopes that with the new guidelines created by our government, the IATF, and of course, our president, they are inclining to have an event following the guidelines that has been imposed. So, but again, it, it can change depending on the situation of our pandemic, 
the new rules and regulations set forth by the government. But again, they have a strong feeling that they can uh, organize cosplay events, um, hopefully by this year. Okay. JJ, want something to add? Yeah. Um, okay. So the thing about this, um, you know, event organizing during a pandemic since, well, um, one of the things siguro na we can do, no? um, actually, to add from Sir Joshua of Tofiko and what he said, like, the perks of being inside the mall is because it's the mall na themselves na regulating your crowd. Diba? Same with Sir Griffith. They, they are the ones talaga. So parang dun pa lang wala silang team labas. And this team labas, um, yun nga, a good idea from Sir Jolo is why not go team online? Parang if you're using, if every, I think everyone is familiar naman, everyone here is familiar with Google Maps, yung street view. So siguro pwedeng ganun din, parang may street view dun sa event mo. May kita mo yung loob. So again, it's the lines, it's expected talaga, especially dun sa team labans, it's expected to really get longer because of social distancing. But we can, for those events like us, na ticketed and held usually inside a, a mall or a convention hall or even a campus, um, a gated campus, ganon, or a gated um, location, um, expect, it's expected that yung team labas, the lines, the registration, it's going to get longer because of the physical distancing. But what we can do is to ensure that these people um, is not bored or is not tired or parang at least man lang to help them um, experience or get a glimpse of the event is actually to bring a part of the, ano, the event outside. Again, uh, we can do, siguro, we can have cosplayers roaming around sa lines. We can have some, yun nga, as I've said, we can have a LED wall or a TV showing the live games that is happening or live tournaments. Ganun, we, we can do a lot of things talaga to accommodate these people to ensure na even if nandun ka sa team labas, na may, kumbaga na enjoy mo pa rin kahit hindi ka pag rin ganun na ano. Because, at the end of the day, the really nice part of having a live event is you're at the heart of the action. You're with people. You are together with people who will not discriminate you for what you enjoy. Baha, um, bahala, sumagot ka dyan ng ano, ah, sumigaw ka ng ano, oh, magkagibunshin ka dyan kali, ng biglaan, ganun. These people, they're, they're, siguro they'll laugh at you, they might even join you, ganun. This is, parang ano, to be a part of a group, this is the perk of a, ano, a live event. And as Sir Joshua said, inevitably, we really have to go back to holding live events. Not only because the events industry is, ano, um, parang this is their backbone. Yung mga stage, sounds, lights provider, ganon. They're out of, they're currently out of work right now. Or a big chunk of their revenue. And yun nga, pag, pagpakain sa mga pamilya nila, ganon. But at the end of the day, we can really come up with something to uh, hold the event while a vaccine is still being, ano, developed, ganon. And I guess... At the end of the day, talaga, it's about risk. And I'd also just like to share this. Um, you can search it up. Uh, there's a Facebook page. It's Vox. Um, V-O-X. Violin Oscar Xylophone. Um, they shared parang a document, or rather a short film regarding how COVID-19 spreads. And to sum it up, it's basically, they're talking about three things, how 
your risk of getting infected or the risk of COVID-19 spreading is affected by three things. And it's actually ventilation, duration, and distance. So, yun yun. Uh, I, I suggest people watch the video para we can get a glimpse then. Because at the end of the day talaga, I do agree na at some point we really have to take the risk and hold a live event and from there see how people see how the community would react. So, yun lang. Okay. Ito, um, there's an interesting question here. Um, uh, from, uh, again, from Raul Buzon, again, uh, understanding the fact that many convention members are young adults and students, students um, they, uh, do you have plans of promoting or encouraging healthy options and active lifestyle for every convention here in Cebu? I think Jolo can answer that. Sorry, I was in mute. <laughs> okay, so I just want to clarify and like um, maybe educate a few people that um, just because you are healthy and you practice a really active lifestyle does not make you immune to the virus. And even if you may not have any symptoms, that's what you call it. You can possibly be asymptomatic. So by attending, um, uh, by, by uh, having that kind of thought, you are potentially risking your loved ones who might uh, contract and really have the symptoms. So aside from that as well, um, I know there's a lot of um, myths and there's a lot of um, uh, rumors that um, about COVID, but uh, if you guys would want to redirect, go small plug in, go to um, uh, Cebu Backliners. We can uh, show you guys the tips of um, uh, what you should not do. Because um, again, even if you practice social distancing, um, you're going to be touching a lot of surfaces and you don't know if somebody that was positive touched that surface. And knowing that the virus can stay on that surface like from hours to even days, depending. So, yeah, just my two cents on that. But of course, we would still nonetheless want everybody to practice being active, being healthy. Because we want to, again, like uh, show that um, we want to remove the negative... Um, stigma of geeks and geeks are really starting to like it's it's something positive now it's something to be really proud of and right now like we are really like invading the pop culture so like yeah so let's uh, let's be those superheroes let's be those good role models somebody just posted here on our live chat saying uh, yun nga, the, the IATF regulations say that only people above 21 years old would be allowed to and to go outside but yeah, how, how are you going to resolve that? Because the audience of our events natin, it's, not, it's not just only adults. It's not adults. It's mainly school-age children, college kids, college students, and young adults. How can we resolve that? Actually, uh, on my end, Siguro, um, it's very difficult to not allow people to come in but because there is already a a rule or a guideline released by the government na 21 and below are not allowed and 60 above are also not allowed so for me i think it's i have to sacrifice that that kind of scenario that i, I won't allow them to join along rather than losing the event and even worse being banned to have this kind of event because of that kind of um that that simple guideline lang for me so i i think yeah i have to sacrifice on that one rather than losing my clients because i i i provoked or i i disobeyed their guidelines because I want more people to come, more people to come, more money, blah, 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 ganyan, ganyan. So for me, I, uh, I have to sacrifice that one. At, well, it's it won't last long. I think for sure, maybe next year they will allow 
the 21 and the 60 above to come in. So, yeah, why not sacrifice just one time for the benefit of everyone? Others? Uh, what are your um, if I may add, no, um, again, that's a government regulation. So, malaking correct yun, malaking check mark kay Sir Griffith because we can't go against that. <laughs> and as you've said, uh, Red, um, a big chunk of our attendees are actually the young teens or yung mga 10 years old and above. Ganun. So, unless this provision is lifted, we it's going to affect talaga our event even if we um considering if we push through with the event so that's one thing then uh, we as organizers we will consider it then because at the end of the day this experience nga of holding the con event it's about us kumaga it's about bringing people together and kung may ganong restriction sa age then parang meaningless or hindi siya ganong meaningful so yun lang um let's just wait na lang especially since wala pa rin namang clear guidelines on their so-called new normal if i remember correctly parang the guidelines set by ETF or the interagency task force uh, it's up to the modified general community quarantine, which states that live events can now be held, but there's a yun nga, yung 50% na capacity that must be observed. Hanggang dung ka lang sa 50%. As for the age, baka nandun din siya dun sa MGCQ, uh, we still don't know. Pero yun nga, we really have to wait sa anong direction ng government because this is something na we can't challenge or we can't ano, or else we risk having our events banned or penalized. So, yun lang. Okay. Um, I'd also like to add something. Okay, Max, go. Okay. So, like, basically, the problem right, right now is how do we adapt? How do we transition into something that we can still be consistent with our event quality? And, um, you know, j just our events transitioning into something new. Now, I actually believe that we have what it takes to uh, go full online. It eliminates all of the risks on um, our, our con goers, our participants, our visitors, all of that. Because honestly, on, on my end, I really value their security because if one gets infected, just me, yo. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I always say in Cebu, uh, if one gets infected, it's going to be PR hell. And it's really, all of those fingers are really going to point to our events. Because even as much as we want to um, implement strict security guidelines, there will always be that one person, possibly someone so pasaway, and they'll compromise all all of the uh, efforts that we uh, prepared for a certain event. So I think for this year, it's really best if we just go online. We have what it takes. We have what it takes. I, I can I can assure you that. It's just that um, it's going to need, um, first of all, some guts because it is a risk. We haven't done that yet. But uh, in terms of like envisioning it, we have what it takes. We definitely do. And that leads us to the last uh, final point of the night. And uh, we have to go, we have to cut this short. We, we, we are enjoying this. We are very much enjoying this uh, conversation right now, this round table right now. Of course, uh, big events right now are going to switch into digital mode, digital uh, conventions, uh, live stream perf elements of that, live stream performances, uh, Online merchandise, e-commerce merchandise, and of course, uh, the online Q&As, round tables, panels, discussions, everything else. Guys, what do you think? What do you or what do you think should be the elements of a digital pop culture convention? As a final thought. 
a lot of cameras. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a lot of cameras. Really? Um, a very solid internet connection. Lots of UTP wires and a lot of really strong computers mm. is what it's going to take. And a very well-disciplined staff and a lot of safety gear. And um, yeah, that's basically it. And some entertaining hosts and someone who's really good at making programs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just say it for the sake of argument. The VR convention right, will and, be feasible. Um, if I convention will be feasible. What do you think would be the elements of a digital convention? Not aside from the equipment itself. What could be other elements do you think in your in your own event in your own events? Any pwedeng pa pwedeng pa ating dagdag sa isang digital convention? I actually think uh, okay, okay, before I pass it on to Jolu. Um, I've been scouring YouTube for like the whole duration of the quarantine because I've got nothing else to do. It's, I'm so bored. So I've seen a lot of um, celebrities. Okay. Now, uh, one uh, good trope that we Cebuanos have, or basically the Philippines, is um, inviting uh, special guests, right? But, you know, one thing that could actually uh, put that into a reality is to. Uh, probably strike a deal with that certain guest that we want to have in our event and then go live, you know, something like that. That's that's one thing that we can uh, have as an additional element. Also, um, something, uh, I, I mentioned programs, right? Programs that could be more aligned to um, uh, our events spirit, like uh, as, as what it is, like for example, um, uh, Toficon, yeah, Toficon is uh is it has a lot of toys, it has a lot of cool stuff like that. Um, how about if we get creative mm -hmm. and probably put like prepare something like I don't know action figure fighting something like that, and just just adding new elements that we can um, fully utilize within our arsenal. You know, you get what I mean, <laughs> or am I? Am I being crazy here? I don't know if I'm crazy. Okay, I know I'm crazy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really get you. Yeah, so um, honestly, uh, if you're not, I you think you're not crazy. <laughs> when it comes to um, adding new elements, we can, we can. It's just that uh, we can't bring that up right now because um, that takes a lot of time to think. But I'm sure everyone, like all of you guys, can like have a very splendid idea. I believe that. I believe that. You guys are all talented. You guys are all great. Hey, Jolu. All right. So, um, what I what I want to add from uh, what Max was saying, because uh, I think what Max was trying to say, what he was trying to um, embody is immersion. So one of the things that um, uh, people like is like to be fully immersed in the event uh, in the convention. So we need it, we need our convention goers, our edge that will really um, uh, let them be more interested. Is in a way to give them that digital immersion. Hence the suggestions of VR and everything. And then another note in regards to like international international guests, we have to note as organizers that definitely. If we were to avail of um, these international guests, their fees will definitely be significantly less since we just need their their digital presence instead of like worrying about the logistics, the plane cost, and um, the plane cost. So it can happen, and even like I'm um, having breakout sessions with specific moderators for maybe one for yeah for each um uh, each community for um, the vendors for the artists. For the, the um, uh, our sponsors, our exhibitors, so different rooms for them to immerse different kinds of programs. There can be art jams. There can be yeah live auction selling. There can be um, uh, showcasing of like a uh, um, uh, premier um, uh, premier items, and like basically giving them offering them a digital map, so to make it feel as if yeah they are still in the convention. 
Okay. Other, That's other, uh, other, Joshua. Yeah. Um, um, with regards to what Max and Dolu said, uh, um, since this is one of the questions that you, you know, uh, beforehand uh, asked us to prepare, um, we really thought about that. And actually, yes, Toficon is maybe one of the easiest things to turn into, you know, an online convention because um, just the craft itself, it's essentially about showcasing things, right? And, um, you know, all collectors are actually very guilty of sitting for hours in front of a screen watching toy reviews on youtube so you know um you know we could we could spend hours just looking at toys that we aren't even interested in but we just really enjoy you know watching people discuss the details of an action figure all the features it does you know how it was made so um another thing that um is you know one thing that is probably going to be a very useful tool for converting at least our type of convention into, you know, an online thing is exclusivity. Um, you know, um, not everything actually needs to be live in, in, a, in an online convention. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, some things can have to be, you know, live, but um, what if you just, you know, make a, you make a, make a page that's you know only available or accessible in the hours of the convention and after the convention that that page or that website is gone you know so um uh people can only access things in that website for the duration of your event you know that's something you can use um if they're exclusive you know items merchandise or streams of people you know that people will really want to watch they can only access it during the hours of your event. That's something you can do, you know, but that doesn't necessarily have to be live. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be live. It can be pre-recorded, you know, the website can be, you know, uh, pre-mapped. You know, I think that's what Jolo already mentioned. So yeah, that's one thing that we can actually use in our events, exclusivity. Something that, you know, adds incentive to people to stay home and still go to your event. So I know a lot of us have, you know, different ideas of how to carry out that exclusivity for that event, especially how, you know, our events are all different. But, you know, I think in that sense, yes, TofiCon is one of the very doable events that can be, if it becomes necessary, we can actually convert it to an online event. And I think, you know, a lot of you guys can actually do the same thing. Okay, thanks very much, Joshua. Uh, Griffith, do you have any, something to add? Uh, again, for the past siguro, three years, it's always been mall-based uh, mini. So for that online, it's going to be difficult because number one, everything has to go with the client's demand. So, But for us, siguro for the CCG, we have some... Actually, one of our R&Ds is why can't we have an online game? where the cosplayers can participate and then they can win uh, Siguro freebies or merchandise coming from our uh, patron, um, well, uh, online shoppers, ganyan. But in the sense that we are going to go online with our platform right now, it's going to be difficult, especially when the clients are requesting food traffic. So it's going to be hard for that one. But... Um, sooner or later, we can maybe talk with one of our clients. Maybe we can have an online, um, siguro online event sponsored by them. Uh, we'll just keep posted. But I think, um, I think, uh, Sir Jolo Iscano and of course Sir uh, JJ and of course um, Sir Max, they can do it on behalf of the cosplay community and of course on behalf of the cosplay co-organizer. So um, I, I, I do apologize, but I am putting my hopes and my prayers to you guys because I know you can pull it off and you have, I think you have better alternatives than what uh, CCG can do for this year. Correction, Cebu can pull it off. 
Wow. wow. <laughs> I like that. I, I, I have really I, very much high hopes really for some. Nice. Wow. So Manila guys, Manila guys. Kaya kaya niyo ba yon? Manila guys, are you ready to? So you can pull this off now. So I'm challenging Manila guys if you can pull this off too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Manila, very nice, uh, Manila started it and then Cebu comes next. So if, exactly. if Cebu can do it, why can't Manila? <laughs> yeah. But you are you are the guys are you are making making so many suggestions here and forth. Napakaraming suggestions. JJ, do you have something to add dun sa ating final ano? dun sa question ko about uh, virtual conventions. Yes, um, ano naman, um, well, to give a sneak peek din naman, uh, Otaku Fest, we are actually considering online. Um, yun nga lang, syempre, as everything goes, we're also parang ano din, um, not only asking for support sa community, but also Actually, we're asking for ideas, so literal na, di ba? Parang, kasi the thing is, with live events kasi there's interaction. And that's something that is really hard to pull off pag online na. How can we, how can us organizers continue to interact, continue to parang make the experience, bring the experience outside of the ano lang the digital aspect lang so that's that's a really big challenge na we have to overcome and siguro it's uh, I, i've heard really great ideas na um to mention yung kay Sir Joshua Tofiko yun nga yung parang yung toys parang they'll, they'll showcase a pictures na or a video na um, even yung idea nga ni Sir Max is a bit parang ang ganda tingnan kasi you know action figures parang lalaruin mo siya live audience so something y- yung ganun that, that that interaction that sense of still being there despite online siya that's a really big challenge na i like the positivity and i believe yes Cebu can pull it off um it's just a matter talaga of support yun nga uh, the congoers you've been with us throughout the years. So, uh, yun, uh, your support is uh, very appreciated and is needed in this time of um, a pandemic, a challenge, kumbaga. So, yung support, the ideas on how we can improve the experience. And kami rin, we will, uh, you know, we're a big think tank of people naman, uh, capable people. We can transition to online, siguro not all, because at the end of the day, there's no beating, for me personally, there's no beating a live event. But the online aspect is exciting, to say the least. So, hopefully, yun nga. Let's see. Yeah. And yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, tama yung sinabi JJ. JJ, what sinabi, yung sinabi JJ, what JJ said was right. It, the interactivity yung closeness, the interaction between the guests and the congoers is one of the big, uh, one of the big reasons why conventions flourish. The, it's a good way to see your idol, your cos favorite cosplayer, favorite J music artist, see live in person. There's a different. There's a may different na energy or may different tingling sensation yun. There's a different element when you see them live as opposed to seeing them on a screen. Am I right? It's, it's, it's totally different. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's different. Yun. So, uh, again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like now to give the floor to you for your any final comments any final thoughts messages of hope to your audiences to your fans to everyone involved to everyone your your members and everything i now give the floor to you we'll start this in order let's start with jj 
Um, okay, sige, thank you. Um, uh, once again, um, thank you for everyone that is listening here. Thank you for Jay Keepsakes, for Red moderating, Gary, for being the backstage guy, and basically Sir Jolo, Sir Griffith, Sir Joshua, Sir Max, for all those wonderful ideas and exchange of, uh, I mean, discussion na nangyari ngayong gabi. It's a really, it's a good eye-opener. Um, as to what the future of uh, hobby conventions and events dito sa Cebu and hopefully a glimpse then of sa Manila, sa Davao, Bacolod and all those places na meron. Um, ano lang is, uh, also I'd like to thank again the, yun nga, the congoers, your, everything we do, this is talagang for us and you've been a big chunk of the support and the uh, Ano, success of all of us and hopefully kung what the future brings be it online be it a live event do continue to support us especially yung mga pa, ano mga mag a, a, ano yung mga mag maghold na yata ng event yung Toficon Arcon just to name a few and expect na ano um, Otako Fest is here where a much more open team na uh, we will be ano naman we're we're going to support din naman because at the end of the day ano pa rin naman tayo kumaga we belong to one industry so yun lang thank you okay uh jolu you're next all right so uh, first and foremost i just really want to thank uh all of you um thank uh the Keep Six and the X Live Events team for invitation. Thank you, Gary, as well for being our back uh, back support um, backstage, and uh, thank you as well for uh, you guys, uh, JJ, Joshua, Griffith, um, Max, and um, thank you, Zed, for um, like sharing your thoughts and um, uh, brainstorming. I was at uh, if you would see me look up, I would always be taking notes because like these are really really good ideas we are collaborating as we speak and um yeah so i just want to my, my parting message is that i just want everybody to um keep a more positive mindset mindset and just be be let's be good examples let's be good role models let's show that we are responsible geeks hobbyists otakus and then we can make a difference in society let's all be amazing uh, superheroes thanks very much uh jolu max i feel i know you have something to say a lot take it away okay so uh again um just like uh, what the rest of the crew said uh i really want to thank you red uh, jay gary thank you so much for having us in this roundtable discussion and um i honestly um Looking in the future, I honestly think that, um, again, I've said this over and over, but we can adapt. And um, I'm actually looking forward to this event that we're, um, pl- I'm just going to plug it straight away. Joyo Expo. Joyo Expo is supposed to be uh, happening. Uh, it's supposed to be like a month from now, but we are trying to um, uh, change plans, you know, can try to adapt it into something new. And um, probably like, we're the guinea pigs <laughs> probably like the guinea pigs and uh, we can test things out but of course we do that with absolute planning as much as possible with less compromise but um i really want all of the events that uh uh that's homegrown to actually happen like uh, toficon uh, ccg events archon uh otaku fest for next year Heck, even uh, Only Pop. I, I wanted, <laughs> I want Only Pop to happen because it was a very, very fun event. And um, just, uh, I can honestly say that I would be wi- more than willing to help. I'd be more than willing to help. I've canceled a lot of my plans for this year, and um, I think at this point, we should all be working together. We we, we are from different organizations, but what's the most important thing? right now is to keep our industry alive uh cinemas they're losing a lot um blockbuster movies they're losing a lot a lot of things are losing right now but 
we can do uh, what we can to just keep our industry alive. Because if we don't keep this alive, what are we going to go back to for the next years, for the following years to come? Two years, three years, when the vaccine's already there. What scene do we have left if um, people are just going to miss out on us? Right? So, um, yeah. Thanks very much, Max. Um, your one of your your points are very much well, uh, well, well raised and very much well, well applauded. Uh, Griffith, your turn. Say thanks. So, on behalf of the Cebu Cosplayers Guild, and of course for on behalf of the Cebu Cosplay community, we'd like to thank Keepsake for having this kind of um, junction, and of course to uh, Jay, to you, Sir Red, to Gary. Uh, to the co-organizers, uh, Sir JJ, Sir Jolu, Sir Joshua, Sir Max, thank you so much for, despite of this kind of monstrosity, we are still united as one cosplay organizers or hobbyist organizers here in Cebu. I also would like to thank my uh, team, uh, Mayato, Aine, Penelope, Stan, Melody, the Higisui clan, that despite of this hiatus, we are still one. We're still trying to make to do research and development to make sure that we can get back to our cosplayers and, of course, to uh, the hobbyists. And also, um, if I may say, um, I'm very confident that the Cebu cosplay community will not be down just because of this kind of pandemic event. We are still going on through our normal lives. Well, we are still doing what we can do with our hobby and, of course, with everything that we have done. Um, don't lose your hope just because there is no cosplay event that's been happening for the past two or three years. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, on September and the remaining months for this year, everything will be good. There will be more events to come, more clients to come. Um, Maybe we can do more on the online um, cosplay events that we are trying to tackle on because of we are adapting to the new norm. And I hope that this, um, this situation right now does not diminish or even lose your hope of becoming a cosplayer because before this pandemic, we were and we will always be cosplayers regardless of who we are and what we have been doing. So again, Cebu, Usbong, Og Ayaw, Og Pahulay. Thank you so much, Kip Singh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Griffith, for that uh, very wondrous, uh, wondrous message. And uh, I think Sir Joshua won't be here to, to say his final thoughts. Yung limitations of his uh, mobile limitations of his mobile uh, device, I guess. So, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, and thank you very much to JJ, Jolu, Max, Griffith, Joshua, and and Gary, our person in the back. Um, thank you very much for showing your thoughts about your the Cebu events cosplay scene, the Cebu hobby scene, and uh, what is happening. Uh, right now during the pandemic i learned so much from you i've learned so much from you and yes cebu is very special to me personally because yung dalawa ko nilang is there in cebu they're my mom's best friends by the way and kaya gusto ko sa korek pumunta ng cebu just to not just only to visit my mom's my nilang's there who are best friends of my mom and i'm very much basically cebu is cebu I mean, who can get wrong with Cebu? It's John Cebu. Naku, napakasarap. Yung uh, danggit. Napaka, 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 ano. Ito, may message si Joshua. Ito. Um, nagpapasalamat siya. Thanks for this, guys. Nice talking with you guys. We really look up to all your events. Without you guys, there would be no topic on. Yes, you guys. That's the message by Joshua Barella. Again, thank you very much, um, to all of our Cebu or events organizers, uh, Jay, thank you very much for. For I, I know, medyo ako yung nag-ask to, to join in this one. Uh, this uh, 
this line because I just want to ask this guy. Of course, I want to know more about how Cebu copes up with these uh, conventions and all that shit, which is quite different from Manila. Of course, Jay, you have been to Cebu, di ba? Yes, been to Cebu for like, ano na, sigari yung lason eh, sigari yung lason. Pero, in these places kasi, um, we, again, backstory, I met my counterpart sa Cebu, that's Gary, sa cosplay minya dito sa Manila when he went here. Although hindi kami masyado nakapag-interact personally at that time, there was this online interaction and then Gary invited me to Cebu, that is his history. That, uh, I visited Cebu for like, fourth time na, so mm-hmm. far. Ayun na wow. So I'm really happy to get in touch with everyone in Cebu. Daghang salamat sa inyo. Uh, I love, uh, ano, sabihin ko na to, I love Cebu. <laughs> yeah. No kidding, no kidding. Yeah, ako personally, if there's a personal connection with me in Cebu, of course, my ninas are there. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, it's very much good to hear what our event organizers in Cebu had to say because again we should not just limit ourselves to what Manila is thinking we should also think about how other regions how places like Cebu, Davao, Bacolod, other organizers they are also experiencing the very much same thing our organizers in Manila are also experiencing so it's very good that we had this discussion, this round table, to hear them out and to see ano ba yung ginagawa nila when it comes to the pandemic and what are their plans. Of course, dito natin na yung online uh, convention, but yeah, let's keep, uh, let's have this open discussion um, among all other uh, organizers from different parts of the country to see how are they coping up and how are they going to survive, especially now that we are going into the general community quarantine starting tomorrow. Ayun. So, uh, moving forward, um, ito, last, last points ko na lang. At least I can say something because there are a lot of events, shows, not just in the Philippines, but also in other countries that are going online. For example, in the Philippines, there's Toycon TV. Of course, kami nagmamanage niyan on, back set, on the backline because it's far by x right there. So, uh, also, uh, AFA United. AFA United, uh, so this is Sally Amaki. Sally Amaki from Nanabuno ni Juni. Of course, Singaporean. AFA transition to online na rin. And then we have Nerdfest Online. Adrian Arcega, thank you very much. You've, you've become an inspiration for me to hold this in se- for Cebu. Uh, also, uh, okay, back to Sali Amaki. Yes, Sali Amaki. And then there's in Malaysia, there's this cosplay computer. Cosplay computer uh, was an online offshoot of the cosplay computer event by the Magic Train. And pinunod ko siya, and I was really interested in the reactions. Kasi you talk to cosplayers, probably the same issues in their communities, like what we have here. And also, of course, let's not discount that, uh, oops, na wala. I have photos of Kirio Koko there. Yun, Hero 2, of course. Ito yung na-features of the Manila Times, which Red wrote. Yes. <laughs> yes, na-features of the Manila Times, of course. Uh, you, the, the article is still up, by the way. Yeah, just yeah, sorry, search sorry, for sorry. Hero. So, yun. Um, yeah. Uh, online events are now becoming the norm. Na, hindi natin, we never expected it would happen. And some people say it's impossible to happen. But here we are. Oh. It's happening. I mean, you can literally just imagine um, uh, celebrities like Jay Leno, um, Jimmy Fallon, all of those guys, they're transitioning online. They're making home videos now, uh, putting it up on YouTube, minus the production, minus all that polishing. And you can really see that they're trying what they can to stay relevant as same as uh, what we're trying to do as well, because they really need to stay relevant. So once this whole um, uh, toot storm is gone, then uh, they'll get back on their feet, you know? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and, to think, and to think John Oliver has launched into, uh, of course, John Oliver did that while also spitting truth facts. <laughs> so on this year, 2020, John Oliver's show has given an idea to the Univer- uh, Universal Fighting Championship, the Ultimate Fighting Championship, rather, 
of saying universal UFC kasi to the, for UFC to actually take claim that trademark for the UFC which is the Fight Island and also in this moment we've uh we've seen the moment where Elmo the Muppet from Sesame Street will have his own on uh on on, on not to late, late night show, show. <laughs> late night show on HBO Max action yes yeah. So yun, Actually, I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically ito yun. Um 2020 the pandemic has uh zoom or has ano uh, has printed fast all the plans. Of course, we were doing all some things like we used to do. We were we had our plans. We had plans. We we admit to that. We had plans. I had a plan to go to an event Cosplay Carnival, sana kaso nangyari nga yung ECQ. I know you all guys are busy checking, uh, busy planning and discussing all of your events, meetings and all that, but the, the pandemic threw a monkey wrench out of it. So, it's good that we have this discussion because it galvanizes us. It galvanizes every single event organizer, be it in Manila, be it in Cebu, be it in Davao, or be it anywhere else in the country, to say that we are we are there, we are united, and we are thinking of ways to to give you the same entertainment, albeit on a different platform. So, ayun. so with that said, this has been the Cebu Hobby Events Organizers <laughs> Roundtable presented by Keepsakes and powered by Exync Events. So, let me pull up the document. I would like to say thanks to everyone. So, first and foremost, I would like to thank JJ from Otaho Fest, Griffith Salomon of Cebu Cosplayers Guild, CCG, Max Makiling, the Q-Man from Unity Productions in Cebu, Esports United, one of the people behind uh, one of the groups behind the Mayor's Cup, and John Escanio from Arcon Cebu, and also Joshua Varela of Topicon Cebu, and of course, let's give time to thank our platform sponsor. Uh, it's powered by Exing Events, CEO Orly Balesteros, one of my bosses. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Pop. And yeah, I think that will be it on behalf of everyone us right here remotely. Uh, doing things online. I'm Jay Agonoy, and I'll be seeing you in our next live. Salamat po. Dagang salamat. Dagang salamat. 1980 on Twitter. Yes. Yes, at Jay Agonoy on Twitter. And also, don't forget my podcast, anchor.fm slash keepsakes. Tomorrow, 9 a.m., I'll be releasing a podcast about VTubers. See ya.